Exactly. Uh, just drop the hook right where I am. Okay, coming in now to drop over. Radioed us and asked us to drop in Brian's scuba gear before we drop the hook. Um, I think Brian's gonna ride the anchor down. He's been talking about wanting to do that for a long time, so now he finally gets to. <laughs> Previously on Delos, we get an introduction to kiteboarding by the one and only Pokemon. sunrise so we're about to kick off start heading north I think we're shooting for I don't know Beckway then on to St. Lucia don't really have a plan because we're gonna be beating into it a little bit from what I'm told by um, Brian and Brady and so we're just gonna get out there start heading north see how we feel and then go from there Second shift. Cool, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Have a good snoozer. You got all the pillows that you need? Um, I think I'm pretty good. Great! Ah, uh, we got about 25 knots dead on the nose. So we're gonna motor sail up around this corner, I reckon, till we get to about here. Uh, and then I think we'll stick behind Meru. I considered going out this way, but that's that'd be one hell of a beat because we'd have to go all the way out past World's End Reef, which is quite far. So I think we'll stick behind Meru, we'll work our way up here. Maybe we'll stick behind Kanawan and then back ways right here. So I think once we get out of here past uh, Palm Island and head to port, we'll do be doing all right. It is not a calm day though. <laughs> Bye bye Beckway. Bye bye Beckway. No <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, where are we? Are we? You know. You. Bye bye Union. <laughs> 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 basically adjust in the sails uh, to trim the boat so we don't have, look at what I have to hold. See, I have to hold about 10 degrees of rudder for us to keep course, which means the sailboat wants to pivot up into the wind because the main sail and the mizzen act like basically wind vanes. So now that Alex has eased off the main and the mizzen, like I'm down to five degrees rudder or three degrees rudder, which is fine. Because imagine if you're going through the water constantly, with the rudder turned, it's like a brake. Yeah. It's just slowing you down. So now we're doing 9.9 .9 knots, right? 9.7 knots. We do have 28 knots of wind. 9.9, 10. Yeah, she's flying. 10.1.
there, you did you? Yeah. Ah. Uh -huh. Chance to get up the top from here. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't think we could really motor into 30 something knots very efficiently. You ready? Attacking. Like, that was a bumpy ride. I don't know who's driving this bus, but nah, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> so it was like 20 foot drops, it felt like, just like, ah, ah. a couple of them had just like engulfed me into it. Ah. Pretty excited about that. <laughs> okay, I think this is a good spot. Oh yeah, this is fine. Whenever you're ready. This looks good. Okay, we're on the bottom. girlfriend ever in the world. Um, the day is starting out right. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna go diving. Uh, it's gonna be an incredible day. Yeah. I feel it. I can feel it too. Feel it in my bones. Excited for scubas, Kevcha? Yeah. It's been a minute, huh? I actually just looked at the footage from Bruno when we were here last time diving. We saw some really cool stuff. So excited. We don't have a very far commute today. <laughs> Just over yonder. <laughs> Lou's got her fast braids. That can only mean one thing. A good braid is key for a good diet. Our Dodger is not in good shape. It's not dodging anything. It's not dodging anything. Not only has it been leaking water for a long time, but it's actually just falling apart because we think that they didn't use like the UV protectant thread on it. So pretty much the whole thing needs to be just replaced, but for now we're trying to make it work. Oh, what's this thing called again, Brady? A hand all, A W L. Hand all. The sailor's best friend. Hot tip. Hot tip. Keep a hand all. Ding. Hand all. Keep a hand all near you at all times. <laughs> all times. Get it? <laughs> As we go around the corner, you see those houses over there. It's moon hole. Every time I say moon hole, it's all Brian can say. You're a moon hole. Brady's a moon hole. He just doesn't know it yet. Uh, this place is called Moon Hole because there's a hole over there. Like that house that we can barely see is basically built in a large arch. And apparently, the right time of the year, yada, 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 the moon shows through from one side to the other. So it's called Moon Hole. Uh, but the whole area is quite unstable because, and all of this is what we heard, uh, a big giant rock fell from the top of that cavern and like smashed down into the one of the houses, maybe like the bedroom or something. And uh, so then nobody lives in it anymore because it's not safe. And we met Mr. Moonhole last time we were here, but we forgot to send him an email. So, such is life. <laughs> we're gonna go in and check out the mooring. It's suitable for dunnos, or if not, if there's a non corally part of the bottom, we can anchor it. Let me go have a 
look down and see how it is. Okay, roger that. Six meters at the mooring. Let me know how it looks at the bottom. Okay, the, the mooring is good, but... It's a little too close to the side, which is shallow. But right where I'm at right now... There is a nice big sandy spot where we can drop the hook in. Probably about seven meters of water. Okay, so I'll just come up right where you're in the water right now, and there's enough swing room if I'm gonna come up and drop the anchor right where you are. Yep, exactly. Uh, just drop the hook right where I am. Okay, coming in now to drop over. Radioed us and asked us to drop in Brian's scuba gear before we drop the hook. Um, I think Brian's gonna ride the anchor down. He's been talking about wanting to do that for a long time, so now he finally gets to. <laughs> Love it. Waiting for yeah, we're riding the anchor down. <laughs> I'm not sure what his exact plan is, but he has a GoPro, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll find out soon. Enough. Yeah. I don't want to, for like years he's been saying this. <laughs> and he's going to be a happy boy. Nice anchor set. Good job, brother. Let's go diving. There's not enough room, not enough room on the boat here. <laughs> Some people might say we have too much stuff. Well, we gotta capture it. <laughs> Today, setting up the Panasonic GH5 with the Nauticam housing and the 12 to 35 lens. So this is the Olympus TG5 Tough, and this is what I'm gonna dive with today. It's actually a pretty badass little macro camera considering its price. And it lives in this Icolite housing, which is also decently priced. And this whoa, is the Icolite casing for my Canon. 5D Mark IV. Besides acquiring and learning all of this camera gear, diving on your own is incredibly challenging. The gear, the boat, the compressor, it all takes a ton of work to maintain and money to run. And then there's the most important part of diving on your own, finding the best spots. This often involves a lot of exploratory diving to see what the area has to offer. But lucky for us, there was a local dive boat nearby who gave us some tips on where to go and what to see. Well, I talked to Kurt from Dive Beckway over here, and he said he likes the cave on this side a lot, and he kind of told me where it was. So around this corner, there's an underwater cave at about 40 feet, and some macro stuff. Oh, cool, okay. So that's it, we're gonna go try and find the cave. Okay, okay. Let's check it out, here we go, here we go.
guys see that lobster ball from the sky? I'm gonna call Carol, Moonhole Company Limited, artist in residence. Hi, Carol, please leave me a message. Yeah. Hi, this is Carol, please leave me a message. Is it a guy or a girl? That was a girl. But the person I met, maybe he gave me his wife's business card. Hi, is this Carol? Hey, Carol, my name is Brady. Um, I met your husband during the e Easter Beckway Regatta. And and he gave me your card, and and we're back in Beckway now. Um, and he said to give a call to say hi, and we had a really good chat when we were here last time, uh, and just to say hi, and we wanted to check out the moon hole. Right now, no idea where he is at the moment, <laughs> but you could call him back a little bit later. You know, he might be able to meet you in the harbor for a beer or something. Okay, well, we're we're actually doing some diving right out in front of your moon hole right now. Oh, you you're the people on the boat. We okay. are. Yeah. So Hi. okay, well we're we're here. Uh, if 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 uh, we yeah if we can meet later for a beer or something or here's the thing. The, the thing about the original house, the one you're looking at under you know, the arch there. Yeah. That is completely closed off to everybody. Okay. Because of continuous rock falls. Yeah, pretty um, dangerous, that's, huh? That's why the founders moved out of there years ago because a boulder came through their bedroom uh, ceiling. Oh wow. The rest of the peninsula is completely private, and there there are some houses that are privately owned, and others that the company owns and rents out. Okay. So um, we we have a policy of no tours because otherwise we would be inundated with tourists. Yeah, that we makes. We used to be inundated with people just walking in. That makes so, perfect sense. Um, sorry, can't can't accommodate you there, but 
Um, I'll get Robert to call you back a, a little while later when he comes back. Yeah, that I'm sounds that here. sounds good. We could just we'll just you know talk about the history of it and stuff because we're film right. we're filming again this time when we're here, uh, just for Beckway, and. Uh, right. Yeah, it'd be cool to include it in our story. Your, your anchor isn't dropped on coral, is it? No, we had somebody in the water to make sure it dropped right in a big okay, sand good. patch. Thank yeah. you so much. We really, we really don't want to... actually do drop anchor on yeah. the coral. Yeah, no, we don't want to damage any coral. We like to look at it underwater, so we don't want to damage yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. Okay, well, um, I'll get Robert to call, give you a call back in a while. Okay, thank you, Carol. Have a beautiful day. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Same, bro. What a sweetheart Carol is. <laughs> She's watching us right now with binoculars. No way. Yeah, yeah. Your, your dangle is just out up there. Oh, good. She's probably just binoculars yeah. right I hope she got that 10 ton zoom. Only a few minutes later, a man appeared on the rocks behind Delos. And I, I remember speaking to you, and I still have your business card <laughs> sitting on the wall. You yeah. guys want to take a walk around? Is that okay? Yeah. This place is so crazy. Somebody spent a lot of effort and money building this place. So this is Robert and we actually met last, uh, what was it, April at like the Easter Regatta. Easter Regatta. We yes. were drinking a lot of rum at the plantation house right. and he gave us a card and it said uh, Moon Hole LTD or Incorporated <laughs> or something. And we'd remember, we were actually just talking about what a crazy, cool place it would be. And then you just suddenly showed up and said, oh, hello, next time you come back, give us a call and maybe we can go check it out. And so here we are today. Here you are. So, <laughs> serendipity maybe. Give you a little walk around the place. Cool. We had no idea the story that was about to unravel in front of us. What we thought was a few rundown houses made from stones turned out to be a full-on community that was born in the 1960s. Well, Tom and Gladie Johnston came to Beckway after their house burned down. Okay. And they wanted to take a sabbatical. They were both in the advertising business. She was more the executive type. He was more the creative type. Okay. And Tom was kind of an explorer. So he came out to this end of the island, saw this place, saw the huge rock arch, and kept making trips, making trips, finally, he convinced Gladdy to come out. He first brought her to the arch, and he had built a little platform. It's supposed to be just a picnic spot, but it gradually morphed into something more. Like, let's build a house let's, here. Let's keep going. Cool. So with the aid of the local craftsmen, the masons, carpenters, and little kids hauling bags of sand. And Where did all the building materials come? Did they come in by boat and landed by here? Boat, yeah. And then you had to like hike them up the... We had to land. There was no road out here in those days. We were sealed off from the rest of the island. But um, we brought everything in by boat. Tom and Gladdy acquired this incredible piece of land in the 1960s. Rumor has it they got it for a pretty good deal from a local family that they were working for on the island. There were no roads back then to this part of Beckway. The only way to the moon hole was through crashing surf onto the rocky shore. It took them years and years to get the original moon hole house built. After its completion, it drew the attention of not only their close friends, but the entire world. And people were coming from everywhere, wanting to get their own corner of this paradise. Tom wouldn't build a house for just anyone though and would personally vet them to make sure they were the right fit for the community. Tom created a people preserve, as he called it, for friends, artists, writers, or anyone who wanted to live simply with nature. He believed strongly a house should not be built to be looked upon, but designed so its occupants can look outward and live outwardly, enjoying the world. And what about our new friend Robert? How did he end up here in the 70s? There was a group of about 20 of us when we were in college. Uh -huh. And we decided if we wanted to stick together, we had to like own a piece of property. <laughs> so we each put a little money in the hat. Then we drew lots to see who would take the trip to find this mythical spot. Wow. And one, one uh, other guy and I were the ones that were the lucky travelers. Oh my god. We landed here in the middle of the night on a little sloop. Landed right at the bottom of the Moon Hall house. Tom came down with a kerosene lantern. 
the only light for a mile around. Yeah. And uh, we tried to convince him that this is the place for us, but he sent us to St. Vincent, Canawan, Union, all the other islands, hoping we would find another place because he didn't really like the idea of a bunch of crazy college kids invading his peace and quiet. Right. But eventually we talked him into it. Nice. And then, so you purchased this with a group of friends when you were... One, one house, yeah, one site. How many livable houses are there? They're all in sort of a could be livable... Probably 10. Okay. But they need some work before somebody I'd, could be I'd able to... I'd say 8 of the 10 are in fine shape. And those are some yeah, of the ones... we need to work on. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. And then the idea is to just create a, a community of people that have the same sort of ideals and values and want to live and... and to live in, in nature. In and nature and quiet and peace. Be happy. That's a great concept. Our founder's motto was happiness now. Cool, I dig it. I found it. This is it. Yeah. Where I'm gonna live. You're gonna move in here? We're gonna move in the moon unit. There's a, there's a lot of criteria that go into making a Fidelos compound. Yeah. And this fits almost everything. There's good diving nearby, there's a safe place to keep a boat. There's lots of room to spread out. And just cool shit everywhere. Cool shit Tables. everywhere. Imagine this being your office view. You don't mind if we stick, stick around for a couple days, do you? Like five years later. Tom was never an architect, but somehow built these incredible houses to complement nature and not overtake it. I mean, it's just beautiful. And all the plants and you're like, I mean, if you, I have the feeling that if I would live in a place like this, like you're so close to nature. And not just in the way that you like have plants, but like everything that comes with it, like birds, bugs, bats flying in and out of your room all the time. Like, it's just everything. Nature is right there. If there was a tree or a boulder, he built around it instead of moving it. Local wood was used as beams, flooring, and doors. Anchor chains as railings and he even used old washed up whale bones as banisters and chairs. At times it was hard to tell if you were actually outside or inside. The whole property was designed with a natural flow that led to the next secret spot. So this place was built in the 1970s, so when there was probably still whales out there and they were hunting them, you know? This place just keeps getting better and better. It's now we're on the rooftop and check out this view. What? My only complaint is there's a lot of whale bones around. Yeah. And you probably were used to be able to look out and see whales. Not so much anymore. So. Nate was right. Although it was a bit sad to see all of these whale bones, whaling does play a huge role in the history and identity of Bekwe. So it's no surprise that Tom gave them a home here. It became a common saying on Bekwe, don't throw anything away, sell it to Tom Johnson. Blue, like imagine just standing here doing your dishes and like this is your view. <laughs> like stirring a pot, you know, just like scrubbing away, <laughs> pondering deep thoughts of life and how beautiful the world is. So he was just explaining to us that this place is shut down right now, kind of, like it's off season. So that's why no one's here and why things aren't like set up properly, but that it's really different in the on season when everything's set up and the chairs are all put out and there's cushions everywhere and it's like being used and lived in. So if it's this cool right now, I can't even imagine what it would be like in the on season. What is this? This is the private home of an archeologist. That's oh, all we know, but it's set up to cater for a lot of people. This is definitely my favorite one so far. Whoa. It's just all open all the time. All open, yep. You don't need any anything. You don't need shutters or windows or shades or anything, right? I guess what happens when it rains? I, I don't know. Maybe it gets wet for a minute and then dries pretty quick. This is water intake for rainwater catchment. Right here, this thing. This is the intake, and this is the, the, the lid for it, and they keep fish in the tank to eat mosquito larvae. millions because they're just tiny. Oh, yeah? yeah? 
and they they live no problem off of just mosquito larva. Whatever's in the yeah. water that would eat that. What? And then do you like filter the water after that? We have a just a little hand filter, you know, like a Brita filter. Okay. But I hardly even use that. It's just all good. Yeah. Cool. I mean, if you don't mind swallowing a goldfish or two. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and how much water does this hold? This is a fairly small tank. It probably holds about 2,000 gallons. Okay. And each house has their own, or? Yeah, all houses have at least three or four of these. Oh, wow. That's it's a lot of water. That's our only source of water. And it rains enough to capture it right there. In the rainy season, it does. On top of catching all their own water, these houses are almost entirely off the grid with solar panels and septic systems. That's cool, so that's your solar controllers up there. No way. The king's view. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So what do you do with all the, the waste then? Like the sewage and stuff, does it, do you have, have a septic, septic, you have an on-site septic system? That's worked really well. Yeah, yeah. So you catch rainwater, power from mostly solar, septic system, and so you're, besides food, you use propane for refrigeration and cooking, yeah. I can only imagine what this place would have been like in its prime. For us, living on the ocean, it's so important to be in touch with nature and to work with it, not against it. And when you have a group of creative people together with the same values and beliefs, that's when magic happens. It was very vibrant. There were all the houses that had been built were occupied. Oh, okay. Um, usually by people who were here for about a half a year, winter, spring, summer. Okay. And they would go back to wherever their homes were. I see. So it was quite a great community, the original owners. And then as they passed on, a lot of them uh, had children, but the kids didn't have the time to spend, you know, six months a year here. So, and others just had no interest at all. So a few of the houses became vacant, just sitting there. And uh, right now we're really trying to repopulate the place with new owners. Tom Johnson passed away in 2001. In his will, he left his controlling interest in the Moonhole Company to a trust that would be dedicated to preserving the unique architecture, lifestyle, environment, and vision of what he created over 50 years ago. If you're interested in learning more about this incredible area, head to moonholecompany.com. And if you end up investing in a house here, who knows, we may just be your neighbor someday. Next up on Delos, we set sail towards Dominica with one small stop along the way, diving into a bat cave. We're in the bat cave. You guys ready? You know, the chain is sitting in there in a pile, and if it get hard enough, and if it get hard enough... Really beating it into the wind today. Babe, don't do it. Why won't you let me be a daredevil? It's not worth it. Adrenaline. High risk, low reward. Adrenaline. Alright, real... go for it. That was big rewards, Blue! Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Take a poop of the view. It's stinky. That's the most beautiful view I've ever seen. Look at this. I think I found a friend. I can see your moon. I'll get video, you get in video. Okay. Ready? Uh, videoing. 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 Got it. Camera on. Got it. Got it. Got it. Other side. Other side. Oh. oh shit. Good switch. Ba, 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 ba. Get the pan. Yep. Pan it up. And nailed it. Sequence out. Let's do this. Business in the front. Party in the back. 
Look at that. <laughs> mm. Like it? I like it a lot. <laughs>